Hey, everybody. Hey, Doug. <clears throat> All right. I see Lee. Uh, John Mitchell. Good morning. Good morning. What about uh, Varun? Yep, I'm here. And what about Joe Sherman? I'm here. That's it. Uh, Louis? Louis? Yep, Is it I'm Louis here. or Louis? I apologize. It's, it's Louis. Louis. I'm, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Louis. Um, Ganesh. Thank you. Okay, Ganesh, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Uh, Rachel? I'm here. Uh, who is T.S. Nook? That's a new name to me. Oh, Tony Snook. Hello. Are you new to the group? I don't recognize the name. I am. I am new to the group. How are you doing? Excellent. Good. Very well. What, what company are you from? NAIC. NAIC. Got it. Thank you, sir. No problem. I assume you're, you're going to be joining regularly, so I should add you to the attendee tracker? That'd be great. Excellent. Okay, we will do. Do, do, do. I think that's everybody's. Oh, uh, oh I'm going to butcher it. Jay, Jay Prakash. Hey, hi. Uh, even I'm new to here. Hello. Hello. Yeah. All right. So make sure I got you. Uh, do, do, do. Chris Borchers. Hey, I'm here. Hello. Jim Curtis. Jim, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, excellent. Eric Erickson. Eric, are you there? Okay, I don't see a little microphone, so I'll have to wait on him. Do -do -do. Stanley, are you there? Stanley? Okay, what about Kathy? Yes, yeah. Okay, hey, Kathy. Hi, hi. Uh, um, Steve O. Yes, hello. Hello. Austin? Austin, are you there? I'm here. Just there we go. Cool. Uh, Dan, I'm not sure which Dan that is, though. Is that Rosanova or? It's Dan Barker. Barker, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Doug. I think you might have called my name and I had my mute. This is Stan Halka. Oh, Stan. Hey. Excellent. Gotcha. Thank you. So, Eric Erickson, are you there yet? I'm here. Excellent. Thank you. Let's see. Who do I not have? Klaus. Yeah, I'm here. Cool. Uh, ba -da -ba -boom. Sean. Here. Cool. Thank you. Um, is that really everybody? Oh, you guys are early today. Uh, wait, actually, there's Ryan. Are you there? Hey, this is Viom here from Oracle. I'm sorry, who is that? Uh, this is Viom. Uh, hello. I'll add you, Guillaume. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Stanley. Oh, cool. Um, Gannett, oh, wait, sorry, you already got Ganesh, sorry. Thomas. I'm here. Cool. Is there anybody on the call I'm missing? Oh, actually, wait a minute, Ryan. Yeah, I got you, Ryan. I, I, did yeah, I get it? That's what I thought, okay. Yeah, I'm here. Guillaume is there. So is there anybody on the call who I don't have on the attendee list yet? Ah, that's pretty good. Oh, William, you just joined. You there, William? Yeah, hey. Cool. Uh, da -da -da. Bum, bum, bum. Cool. Oh, you guys are anxious today. And just so you guys know, um, 
you know, obviously, I don't mind if you do it, but you don't technically have to add your last name in the company unless you really want to in there. Um, as long as your name is unique enough that I know which, like, for example, which Dan I'm referring to, I'll get you on the attendee tracker. Um, but obviously, you're still free to add the other information if you want. It's just not mandatory. <laughs> I just like doing it so that I know when someone is talking who like where they're from. Yep. No, it's definitely a good idea. I just didn't want people to feel compelled if you know. Yeah. I don't want people to think if they left their company name off, I wouldn't track them. Like, I usually okay. figure it out. It's also future proofing a little bit, right? Like uh, another stand could join. Another stand. Oh no. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Give us another thirty seconds or so. Is there anybody who joined the call? Hey, Mark Peak. You made it. I see Mark Fisher, you there too? Hi. Hey, Mark. What about the I other did, Mark? I did make it. I'm, I'm still in uh, Armenia. Cool. Uh, what about Mark Fisher? Are you there? I'm here, yes. Excellent. Thank you. Doo -doo -doo. Sarah, haven't heard you yet. Unmuted. I'm here. Okay, cool. All right. You're on. Your Honor, are you there? Uh, uh, yep. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. uh, also, Arit is with me. So, Hi. Uh, okay, cool. Hold on. Why is my cursor not working? All right. Before we get started, is there anybody on the call who is not on the attendee list? All right. With that, I think we're good to go. Cool. Thank you, guys. Uh, boo -boo -boo. So action items, I believe there's nothing really to say here other than to remind people to please complete your AIs when you get a chance. Um, a reminder, we do have uh, the face-to-face -face coming up at KubeCon. It will be an official meeting. So far, 18 people are you know, say they're going to show up. Obviously, you can still show up maybe if you don't do the doodle poll. And I will set up a proposed topic doc as we get closer, usual spiel. So I thought it wasn't going to be an, ish an official meeting. I thought we were... I mean, are you going to have AV so that people can join if they're... I was going to try to have it on, yeah. yeah. We're that going was going to be my request too, Sarah, was that we, uh, like there was the, just call into the Zoom, the standard. Yeah. Okay, I, I just think it should only be an official meeting if we can definitely do AV. Oh, that's no fun. If we can't exclude people, what's the fun of that? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so actually, I guess I should have actually formally asked that question. Is there any objection to making an, an official meeting as long as we can get a dial-in, probably Zoom? And the assumption there is if we, for some reason, have technical problems and we don't have Zoom, then we're going to have to say it's not an official meeting. Is everybody okay with that? Yeah, I'm okay with that. Okay. Yeah. Any, any objection? All right. So no objection. Cool. <clears throat> Thank you. All right. Let's move on to the fun stuff, PRs. First one up is Clemens PR for uh, use scenarios. My internet's going really slow here. So I believe last time we agreed that we were going to basically vote on this one this week. People should have had uh, more than a week to review it so far. Are there any, actually, I guess I should ask, uh, since Clement isn't here, actually, Dan knows a rough, uh, actually, uh, who was it? I'm so bad with names. Joe? Yeah, I'm here. Now, I think Doug might have the latest status because he was in the, the intermediate meetings during the week last week. Okay. Yeah. Well, the latest status is definitely here. So let's just ask the question. Is there any objection to adopting 117 or accepting 117? Use the scenarios. Going once. Okay, cool. Thank you guys very much. And keep in mind, I should have said this actually before that one, uh, the goal here on the call is to try to make forward progress as best we can. As, as with any PR, we can always accept changes later on. We're going for heading in the right direction, not perfection. Mm -hmm. All right. Next one, uh, Sarah, contributor list. Is there anything you'd want to say on this one before we ask the question? Nope, I don't have any additions. Okay. In that case, are there any questions for Sarah before we ask the question? All right. Any objection then? Oh, yes. Yeah, so, sorry, Kathy. Uh, uh, Kathy, she did get your change, I believe. Oh, okay, that's if good. That's what you're going to ask, yeah. <laughs> Anticipating your question, yes. Okay, um, any objection then to adopting that one or approving it? 
All right, cool. Next up, 120. So Sarah, just some clarification here. I did not actually delete content. I did a rename earlier and to, to remove a space from a file name. <clears throat> and I just forgot to delete the file that had the space in it. I didn't oh. actually remove content. Okay, sorry, I didn't have a chance to do forensics, so. No, that's fine. I, I, like I said in my comment there, I, I thought I put a comment in to that effect, but apparently I forgot to hit enter or something, so it's not there. Okay, I was just confused by the thing. Yeah, I think in the future, having them as separate PRs would clarify that, but um, I'm not gonna object to it based on that. Okay, so this one is just adding a link to Clemens' video that he sent out an email about, I believe on the 22nd, and a link to the PowerPoint itself. All right, any questions on that? All right, any objection to accepting it? So let me go ahead and close this. Okay, any objection? Cool, moving forward then. One, two, three. So this one's been out there for about a week, um, unchanged, I believe. So this one is mine. It basically um, takes the position of having source be defined as a URI and that collapses source ID, source type, namespace, and the source object all into just this one URI. Um, as I mentioned in the PR itself, the assumption here is that people will open up follow-on PRs to potentially extract information if they think it's worthy of being its a separate uh, attribute, but this at least gets us a baseline in which to work from. Any questions or comments on this one? Uh, just thank you. I think this this does help simplify. I'm glad to see the source object go away since that was confusing people. Uh, mm -hmm. And you already know I have a, a follow up. So, yep. yep, I've heard several different people want to follow up. So yeah. All right. Anything else? All right. Any objection to approving? Excellent. Thank you, guys. Moving on to one two six. Another one of mine. Uh, I believe this was open like okay, a little while ago, three days ago. Um, okay, so this one, um, I can't remember exactly the context in which it came up, but I know I've I heard at least more than once people talk about potentially having well-defined extensions that have no official standing from the working group other than uh, some people think it would be nice to at least have a, a common place where people can agree on the syntax or shape or definition of some extensions and they just want sort of a common place to put it. So I thought it might be nice to have a place within our, our repo to list out well-known extensions, as I said, that have no official standing, but that people can have a common place to keep them. And then people can add or remove things as necessary here. Um, let me just sort of pause there. Are there any questions on that? Well, I, I just want to say that like, I would really love it if we prioritized changes to required attributes that people think are necessary to hit our 0.1 milestone. I, I'm like, I think that this is a kind of a good way to deal with like a lot of things that would that, but anytime we start a would be nice. Um, I just um, feel like we have really crowded working group meetings and I'd love to focus on the required things. Yep, and just to let you know, one of the reasons I did put this one fairly high is because as we start talking about other attributes, I wanted to give people a home in which to put extensions like this. So for example, if we start talking about an attribute that someone says they need, uh, I want someone to be able to say, well, that's nice, but it should really be an extension and it should go into this document there. That way there's no ambiguity about where it would go if it does get into that bucket. Without this document there, we were sort of left in this nebulous state of, it'll get to find someplace else. <clears throat> and I wanted people to feel like if they wanted to, they could have a home for it. That was the reason I kind of prioritized this one that way. If there is any objection or a concern at all, I have no problem with deferring this to later. But that was my thinking. Hey, Doug, this is Austin. I'm mm -hmm. gonna second what Sarah said, of course, that is super important. Um, at the same time, I, I do like this idea. And uh, I recognize the intent. And I think we actually came up with this at the end of last year, and it simply just fell through the cracks and got lost in the shuffle. So I'm glad to see this um, come back. So I think it will solve a lot of problems. Yep, okay. All right, any other what, questions? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Did we accept this PR and then had a follow on that basically, not only at none at this time, add something about just kind of a point of order, like we will review extensions after uh, 0 0.1 is ratified? Sounds. Mm. Fine. Yeah, APR is valid to me. So yeah. Well, okay. where would that go? Because this is. Well, can we can we defer that? Can we defer that discussion for when they open the PR? 
sure. Okay. I, it's just, I, 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 I'm trying to, okay. So, um, yeah, I think it's just, um, we don't really have a place to discuss how to move more efficiently in the working group. And so not quite sure how to address that. Okay. So let's, let's, let's focus on this. So any, any other questions or comments on this particular PR? Any objection to approving it? All right, cool. Thank you very much. Um, definition of event. Clemens is not here, but this one's been sitting there for quite a while now, so hopefully people had a chance to review it. Are there any questions or comments on this one or concerns? Go on once. All right, any objection to approving? All right, cool, thank you very much. Um, next, Jason serialization. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, so this one's opened up six days ago. This one takes a first pass at defining what a cloud event would look like as serialized in JSON. Uh, I believe Thomas um, had a suggestion for a slight change there, which I hope we might be able to do in a follow on PR. But, um, so the bulk of the PR has been unchanged in, a, in basically six days. The only thing I did change today was based upon someone's comment, I made it clear that non-mandatory uh, properties as defined by the spec are not required to appear in the JSON. Um, I thought that was, that was uh, implicit, but I'm trying to make it explicit. But if they do appear here, then they have to adhere to the description described above. And then I just added a quick example because sometimes examples help people understand what's going on. Are there any questions on this one? Well, I, I think that this is, um, I like the, the sort of work on the JSON format and I don't disagree with it. I, I just, is this gonna cause that every time somebody proposes an attribute, we have to change it in two places? If, well, if, they, if, if everybody's... Gonna, yeah, I mean, if they're gonna add an attribute, then I would think it would be good to show its serialization, yes. And yeah, I think that's inevitable as we, as we make more examples of this anyway. But I do like yeah. the idea of getting this example out there. Yeah. Yeah. If people like, if they, people think it's helpful and it's not too much overhead, then I'm not opposed to it. Yep. Doug, I um, noticed that there are two versioning methods. Uh, I'm not sure if this is discussed anywhere, but if you scroll down, the cloud events version is using one format and then the event type version is using another format. If you scroll down to the example. Oh, did I mess up? Yeah, just a. I thought they were both strings. So you could make it whatever you wanted. Um, if it makes you feel better, I can move the V. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I guess we probably, I guess perhaps we haven't discussed this yet. Yeah, I mean, to, I think I think the spec just says it's just a string. Yeah. So, okay, well let's yeah. yeah let's skip it for now. We could yeah. circle back. Yeah, and this this will inevitably this will have to be updated to be in sync with today's changes, of course. Yep, it's, uh, definitely yes, and I, I'll do the separate PR. I'm not going to update this one without. As part of this, if we, if we do accept it, I'll do a separate PR to update. Based upon today's changes. I think there's too many changes to, to sort of put under the covers as typos. So, Doug, so, um, yes. I have a question. So, I think some of the um, fields here, um, since we have the, you, the new use cases defined, just, I mean, just committed, right? There might be some question, I saw some question about some of the fields, whether, you know, it should be there or not. So uh, this is just, Kathy, this is not the final version. As we add or remove attributes, I expect this to change. Oh, okay, then that's fine. Then. Okay. All right, any other questions or comments? Um, what was um, about my question regarding the encoding? Is it base 6.4 or for the data? Is that something we could address in a follow-on PR? Because I think that's probably okay. gonna be a bit of a discussion. Yeah, probably. Yeah, because I can see that being a very big rat hole, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably, yes. Okay, I appreciate probably. that. Thank you. Okay. I'd say I, I'll, I'll, um, I'll make a note to, to add that. Uh, actually, in fact, I'll, I'll add an issue to remind myself. I'll make a note here to add an issue for um, encoding data. That way I remember to do that because I don't want to forget your comment. Okay. Doug, I think the assumption was that it's uh, not going to be encoded. 
Right. We haven't, that, 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 that's part of, that, that's going to be part of the issue that I'm going to open up is what do we want to do, if anything, with encoding? Okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Any objection to approving it? All right. Cool. Thank you guys very much. Is Ben on the call? I don't think I saw his name go by. I was just chatting with him on Slack. He's not here today. Oh, bummer. Okay, so let's see if we can look at this anyway. Um, so he well, wants maybe to add, if oh, somebody, uh, one of the ideas that if somebody else is an advocate for this, they could talk for it. Yep, obviously, That's yes. I'm, I am a huge advocate of this use case, um, and I can uh, talk a bit about like why, for example, sampling is not averaging or anything like that. Um, I am not 100% sure, like I've been ambivalent about whether this is a top level field or an extension. Um, I think that uh, Ben's concern was that, you know, like as a provider of an observability system, uh, this needs to be something that is not just like the few hipster services might support being observable. Yeah, I, um, to add context, the reason I think that Ben isn't here is because he thought that he would not be able to get this changed through this working group and his interest like in being able to contribute. Like he was just sure that he wouldn't be able to affect change in this working group. So I actually had a conversation with him. I can't remember. I think it was last week. Um, he definitely did indicate to me that he may be pulling back. I didn't get the indication it was because of, of not being able to get this through or other changes. It was more he just he was busy and they're a small startup. Um, on this particular change, he did seem to get have the feeling that, and I apologize for if I'm for speaking for him, but this was my interpretation of what he said, uh, was that his general sense was that the working group would probably not accept this as a top level thing, and that uh, showing up as as an extension, I think was okay with him, but I have to go back and double check in my notes or our Slack ch chat that we had, but it definitely was not going to be a required thing. Um, at best, it would be optional, but probably fall into the extension bucket. Well, certainly it being optional and not in the extension bucket would allow multiple observability systems to, like, then they don't, like, we don't have to wait for everybody to align on some name. It makes it more likely that. Um, yeah, but, but if we take this example, I think we can come with a dozen of more things to add to the spec. I, I think this yeah. is a clear extension. It's not something that's mandatory to observe the system. Well, it's listed as optional, right? So this is comes into the right. But I'm saying I can have a dozen more options that will make sense the same at the same level. Right, which is, which is to like my prior point of prioritizing things that are required. Like we, you know, so I would I would eliminate such things from the spec because that, then I would argue for a dozen more. Attributes. Well, I mean, I, then you'd argue for eliminating timestamp, which I think we all agree not everybody has, but is high value if it's named the same across systems, right? So one of the things that I've, so what I, in my mind, one of the things to consider is something that appears in the spec, even as optional, cannot be easily removed without a version bump. That's something to think about. And the other thing is um, when people have talked about the well-defined extension document that we've just approved, uh, a lot of people viewed that as an experimental place. So if, for example, people aren't sure with how they feel about something like this, it could go into that particular bucket until people have some, uh, some real world experience with it to see whether it gets used enough or is popular enough to then warrant at some point in the future to be elevated to become an optional part of the spec or even required at some point. So that's another path for people to th think about. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that approach too. Yeah, you know, I, I could give you just another example is like batch uh, size. You know, maybe I'm getting a batch of events. It's at least the same level of importance as having a sample uh, rate, because then I, when I decipher the message, I know if it's an array or individual <laughs> event. So it, if I, if that's the level of things that we want to ratify here, then I could come with a dozen that are the same level of importance. I'd rather keep it minimal. Yes. So let me put forward the, the question, or the, let me put forward a proposal. Is there any objection to adopting this property as the first extension to go into the document we just agreed to, the extension document? I think we should actually address the, how are we going to have multiple um, teams 
you know, who are all aligning on a attribute which needs to be produced by one team and consumed by another, you know, like going to work. And they, this is exactly why I propose this governance model of having multiple, if multiple active members are like, we want this thing and it will help us interoperate, then I think that's a really strong, you know, argument towards doing something. Rather yeah. than just saying anytime somebody thinks maybe it's not required or high value, then we just throw it into the extensions bucket. And like, and this is, and I think that this conversation is really important it's just frustrating to have this conversation before we've aligned on the required attributes. So my interpretation is that right now, as we're discussing this, this, this pull request, if people claim that they have uh, use cases and hard requirements that justify this being as part of the spec, either as required or optional, that they should speak up now. I want to say I agree with Sarah's um, suggestion. I think, you know, um, we should not just take, I'm not t talking about this specific sample rate, um, but I think we should not, you know, take out uh, attribute just because of, you know, one person or two person said, no, it's not needed. I think if it helped with interoperability and is supported by, you know, several teams, I think, you know, we should consider it. Um, it's an important attribute. Because there are other fields that are optional too, which are part of these attributes. Right. So I think either we have a good guideline of how we, you know, decide. I think so, Sarah's suggestion is a good one, you know, um, because for some people it might not be useful, but for many other people, it's very useful for interoperability. Right. So, so Sarah has a pull request to discuss our governance model in the process, but as of right now, the process is someone puts forward a proposal, we analyze it, we talk about it, and then ultimately we do some sort of voting on it. So if we want to change the governance model, that's fine. Sarah has a PR and we should talk about the, the, a governance change in that PR and, it, and that's fine. But right now in front of us, we're looking at this. And there are, in, that's, in my mind, there are two different proposals on the table. One is accept the PR as it is, and I'm not hearing a whole lot of support for accepting that, but I could be wrong. The other proposal is to accept the definition as defined here, but move it into the extension doc. Uh, I think we should table this until we figure, like I would like to hear, I, I actually think Ben makes a good case. I would like to hear that multiple vendors would like this as is, and then I really want it in the spec. Otherwise, because if it, if it helps m have those vendors participate in order to have alignment on the naming, then I would advocate for it. If, if the extensions is going to make it harder for pe small companies to invest the time in doing this work, then I would not want it to be in the extensions. And I can't speak to that given the data we have. Okay, so is there anybody on the call who would like to advocate for the PR as it is? One once. Okay, I'm not hearing support for it. Is the, it. I would like to put forward a formal proposal to adopt the definition of this, but put it into the extension document. So can we, can we table it until we have more, until we can like hear from Ben? I suppose we could. I'm just not sure. This PR has been out there for quite a while with virtually no comments. So I'm not quite sure what additional data we're waiting for. Well, to be fair, we haven't really dealt with a lot of PRs. We've been very focused on one or two PRs for like the last three weeks, so. Okay, so tell you what, I will make a comment in this PR that says, basically this, that's it, that says the current status, because I don't want to rush people. So say the current status and let people know that uh, we're probably gonna make a decision next week and what the various options are. So be prepared, how's that? Well, if it takes more than a week, I think that it is fine. I agree, but people need to come prepared to advocate for a particular position. But if no one's gonna advocate for, for example, taking the PR as it is, then we're gonna take that data uh, and deal with so it. So I would like to see support from additional vendors who need this field before making a decision. 
I'm not quite sure what you're asking for, Sarah. People who have, who have. I'm, I'm advocate. So I would like to table this discussion rather than queuing it up for next week until we discuss the governance model. I'm, so Sarah, I'm, I have to admit, I'm very confused. You, you start off the convert, the, basically the phone call talking about how you want to be able to go through things in essence faster. I summarized, you know, I'm being kind of blunt with it, but basically you want to be able to move faster. And yet when we try to move faster, you want to talk about governance about moving faster, which talking about governance doesn't necessarily move us faster. I would like to focus on the required attributes. Therefore, I would like this not to be put on the agenda next week. Okay. Unless what, uh, there is support from multiple vendors who need this field. So Sarah, of the PRs that are out there, I'm not aware of any that talk about required attributes that are ready to go as of right now. The next item on the agenda. That is not ready to go because of the previous PRs that we just accepted. What? Why what? would that be true? <laughs> Because it, it, we, could talk, we can talk about it, and that's why it's on there. But I don't believe it's ready to merge because of the previous PRs that we accepted today. It's going to have to go through some textual changes, if nothing else. So what I would like on the agenda for next week is either people have PRs to the required attributes, or we all accept that it is sufficient and we, are, we have the required attributes that would allow us to be moving on to build, making samples and, and validating that those required attributes work. I, yes, I believe that is the process we have. If people don't like something, they add a PR. If there are no PRs available, <laughs> it's gonna be a very short phone call. That's the process. And I would like, if there are no PRs available, but people don't feel that the spec is sufficient, I think that having a discussion of that is important. And we can have- Rather yes. than talking about optional attributes. I, I uh, priority is given to PRs. PRs are the only thing that gets changes made. So I. Um, so if you want to discuss something, uh, I, that's fine. We could have a discussion, but I am going to give priority to PRs because those are actual proposals. How about this? How about you leave a comment on that PR? We don't add it to the agenda for next week because I suspect it will take more than one week's worth of work. And then we move on to the conversation about the next PR, about Thomas's PR. Understanding that we'll have to change it in light of the things we just accepted. Right, so I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm okay adding the issue there and we'll t let's take the discussion of governance and process offline. But as I said, we'll defer action on Ben's PR and we'll, and we'll move on. Um, Doc, I have another suggestion. Mm -hmm. So for um for discussion of uh, any PR, uh, it's better you know the the PR um author to be in that meeting. You know, for example, oh, if we, yeah, yes, so if the, the PR you know your people might go on business trip, right? If that person is not in the meeting, you know, I think we can postpone that PR discussion. Yes, agreed. Yeah. I just okay. I just I just know I've, I've talked to Ben and. And it, and it sounded like he wasn't going to be able to join us, not just today, but possibly going forward. Yeah, yeah. I'm not talking about specific about this PR. I just say, you know, general. That's a general yep. rule. Yep. Yeah. I okay. totally agree. Okay, good. Okay, so with that, let's move on I to one story. Doug, I feel like yeah. what's missing is uh, clear, clear criteria for what it means to be a core attribute in the first place. And, and so we have these discussions. Um, like my proposal would be that a core attribute is something descriptive generically like the source the type content type so on but any any attribute that's related to the context in which an event is being used or emitted uh, sampling batching those types of things should be extensions if anything and not core attributes okay is Later. that so yeah, you are saying makes sense. all context attributes uh, should be moved to the extensions. Are you suggesting that? I, I don't think that all optional attributes should be in the extensions. Right, so I there's a difference that, between yeah. I think core some optional, attributes and, and within the core attributes, there are required and optional. Yeah. But I so, think what I'm suggesting is that if something is like sample type is clearly not going to be relevant in, in all systems, feels like an extension as opposed to 
the content type is relevant in all systems. So Mark, I think this is a really good, so Mark, I think this is a really good thing to, to, to discuss. And I'm wondering whether you think it makes sense perhaps to take an AI <clears throat> to add, add a little bit of text to the specification to explain, in essence, the three different buckets of attributes we have and the, uh, <clears throat> the thought process that went into deciding which, which things go into which bucket. And that way it, it provides us guidelines and explains to readers of the spec how we made our decisions. Would you be willing to do that? Yeah, that sounds good to me. I'm sure there will be a lot of discussion on the PR, but. Um. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, Doug, I have another su suggestion. So in the extensions, you, I mean, it's mentioned, um, it's not officially supported by this work group, something like that, some wording like that. Mm -hmm. I think that what, why we, we put that, if people spend time discussing that and agree on it, I think, you know, you know, why we, you know, we said that, you know, it's not officially supported by this work group. Okay. I would okay. suggest to removing that, you know, if, you know, people think that it's not needed, then, you know, we remove that from extensions, but that does not, you know, put the extension as a, you know, a, uh, uh, I put the you know extension as a lower standing than than the uh, document. Okay, hold on just a second. Just trying to take some notes here. Uh, arguments on that. Okay, hold on just a second. I'm taking some notes here just um, so we have it. Uh, okay, so I got your AI there at work. Thank you. Okay, so so Kathy, um, if you're proposing to remove some text from that document that we just accepted, I think that that's, a, that's okay. Could you do that through, the form, through a PR so we can discuss it and people can see exactly which text you'd like to see removed or modified? Okay, yeah, I can do that, okay. Okay, thank you very much. All right, I think with that we can move on to Thomas's and you can discuss why you'd like to pull out some, I assume you probably wanna, aside after you reshape it, you're basically you're gonna advocate pulling out some data, right? Yeah, so I wanted to, like, my theory about, like, why some of these fields have been contentious is that when you look at the trees, you lose the forest. So I wanted to at least be able to discuss the forest with everyone. Uh, and then we can, it, like, if we see that some subset is non-controversial and some subset is controversial, I'll certainly break it up. I just wanted to break it up according to actual controversy as opposed to just preemptive and cautious pieces. Um, I think the examples might be the best way uh, in the description, might be the best way to navigate this. Yep, sorry, I was, I was trying to forget where to go, yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, there's a couple of motivating factors here. Um, one is I was trying to bring back some of my original inspiration of uh, using the Istio vocabulary for what they call, actually I think they call it source as well. Um, and um, also some of my confusion I had had with namespace, which we already you know, now just removed. I think there's two things that ultimately need namespacing, uh, the source and the event type. Um, so I had cut that and put it into the source where uh, authority and path are break, basically re-breaking up the URI for source. I don't honestly mind if we want to uh, instead merge authority and path and keep it as one thing. If we specify that the URI must be a subtype of the URI spec that includes the authority component. Uh, but these are basically uh, source authority, source path are very explicitly defined as portions of a URI um, that make it an absolute reference. Um, in practical use, I find this very useful that um, the path is something that generally the, you know, the C code inside the software has decided, whereas the authority is probably based on some config about the deployment. Um, so you, in a later example, you'll see that I have uh, the, I think the GitHub events and maybe a GitHub path but where the authority is my actual local deploy of enterprise GitHub. Um, the Kubernetes concept of source also includes labels. Um, so there's um, Kubernetes has this, AWS has this, GCP has this. Um, and I realize that this also solves a lot of the IOT cases um, because it can allow late time binding for something like a correlation ID, uh, where if we have, for example, that uh, the deployment location is this house or the type is a certain window, uh, your subscription could actually key off of and filter these things. Um, and then with event type, um, since I was getting rid of namespace, if 
felt that uh, we needed that in the event type because if I have some observability system, uh, document.change is very different if I'm talking about a Word document or a database document. Any questions? Do you want me to scroll down to the next one or how do you want to proceed? Uh, we can scroll through examples and hopefully someone will chime up with uh, uh, objections or like that they see value in this or. I would really like to hear um, both from Euron and Kathy about that IoT use case. Does that match what you would like to see here? Um. To be honest, I haven't got a chance to um, read through this um, PR yet. I'm sorry about that. Okay, no worries. Yeah, yeah but I will, I will go through it and yeah, and think about this. I think it's, this is good, you know, I just need to go into details on, you know, all these fields. Okay, like, we can move on to the next use case and give you time to like look through yeah. it next week. And and otherwise, uh, Kathy, I'm happy to talk uh, either here or offline if we have extra time since I know we've been chatting on our respective PRs. Mm -hmm. um, and I just want to make sure, like, I think I, I'm trying really hard to make sure I cover your use case as well as possible. And I think this actually gives a more flexible solution um, than, for example, the correlation ID. Because if the router itself can do the correlation ID and key off of any label, it allows different software to, for example, uh, listen to all... Uh, things that are deployed on Windows or things that are deployed at a certain house. Yeah, I think this carries the information, but you know, for application, for but how do we know which one? Like for example, the previous example, the IoT example, right? You have the source path. You have the um, so here you have the uh, different. You have source path, source label, event type. Uh, how could the application know which field, which one, will be used to correlate all those different events from different event sources together? Yeah, so I think... Um, we need to know, right? And uh, Here, I, I know this gives the information, but we still not, don't know whether we should use source path to do that or we should use uh, you know, source label or any other fields. Yeah, I think that's in some ways intentional that the it's decoupling um, information. So I wanted to make sure that the, for example, the IoT sensor didn't need to understand the way that any given application would be correlating the data and that it could provide non-structured information where, um, for example, the, the application that allows a... Um, a maintenance staff to make sure that something is working uh, could look at a particular house or maybe the vendor itself of certain I said, boilers could make sure that they're not overheating. Um, I think that that the this feels like it is properly decoupling that the source does not understand or depend on the exact application of or routing information of the action. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree with your point. Um, uh, I'm more thinking from an application point of view, um, but maybe we can take this discussion offline. Sure, how, sure. Okay, I, yeah. So maybe how, um, would you like to shoot me an email? We can probably set up a meeting. Sure. That. Okay, thanks. And Yaron, if you have time to look at this before next week to see if it's meant to be your case, that would be awesome too. So Thomas, I think the gist of what you're proposing is basically two required attributes, source authority and source path, and then basically a, a place for, forgive me, uh, source extensions basically. I mean, these are labels, which is not really an extension for most platforms. Like these are very well-defined first party concepts and a number of especially cloud systems yeah but yeah i mean that, that obviously they're not extensions to the person putting them there or they may not be extensions to the person putting them there but from the spec perspective it's, it's sort of a open space where you can stick stuff that you need to but make it clear that it's that these aren't just general extensions they're extensions that are related to the source well Correct. i think specifically my reading of this is they they are things that the source the source is the Sources would be consistent 
in how they advertise these labels. So they, they get to define them, but then they don't like just to arbitrarily use them like, you know, whatever, like the idea is that they're consistent for a particular source so that the consumer actually says, okay, this source has this set of labels and, you know, maybe they wouldn't always be there, but they really, I mean, I'm, I don't need to overly specify it, but the idea is that um, they're, um, they're source defined, the source gets to define them, right? I mean, I guess yes. everything the source defines, Never mind. <laughs> I think um, Sarah, your, your point is, you know, for different vendors, if they have the same type of, you know, um, source, source uh, I would say, for example, same, same type of sensors, but those sensors produced by different vendors, you would like uh, uh, a standard way of, you know, how they define all these source paths and the labels, so the consumer can know how to use them, right, have a standard way of using it. Is that what you mean? Well, just that, I mean, I think that um, I, I, what I'm saying is that I think that I see that, that I see patterns where um, sources provide kind of like some sort of consistent metadata of their own devising, right, that then um, is useful to the consumer. But I think that that sort of, you know, just kind of extends this notion. Um, so I think that like extensions is one way of putting it. Um, however, you know, there was sort of this side conversation in the chat that extensions in the, in the main spec are like really for these like experimental things, but this is really that for a particular vendor or a particular source type, these would be, um, these would have a, a sort of expected shape. Mm -hmm. um, Sarah, I would, I would argue that you're trying to essentially put the event itself into the, you know, envelope. And Actually, be... this is this is precisely addressing the the need of filtering. So this is when um, there is certain metadata for the event, which needs to be kind of it's kind of like on the outside of the envelope. That then the router, and it's totally the source decides this, right? The source is like, hey, there's some of my, um, I have some metadata that um, I think would be useful for routing. And the source has a place to promote that. Is it Thomas? Yeah. Do you think I'm I'm articulating that? In a uh, way? I want to be very careful with the word source because, especially with hosted software, um, there's multiple actors involved. So, a very practical example that happened to me in the past was, um, you know, during Google I/O last year, Google was rolling out some new software, and they really, really didn't want to accidentally roll out the software and break a demo at Google I/O. So Google Cloud Platform has the concept of labels built in. And if I just annotated my project with uh, like a certain key and certain value that said, I want to opt out of changes during this time window, then someone else's software who, you know, the IT enforcement policy at Google would change the behavior for my specific Google Cloud storage bucket. And that's like the type of thing where it's, it's not even the, um, in the hosted service uh, case, for example, it's not even the person who created Google Cloud Storage that knows to, to um, inject a specific label. They've given a platform for the operators of the system as a whole. Whereas experiments, it's very often that, for example, the router or the source has a non-canonical field that they understand, they publish, and they submit whereas labels are left to the developers or operators of this cluster. Yeah, you know, two comments. One, if I'm looking at the hosted service example, I, I wouldn't classify something like bar.jpg as a source. I, I think it's sort of the, the thing we're talking about. It's not necessarily the thing that generated the event. And, and the second is that labels doesn't have to be confined to the source. There may be labels that are injected throughout the way so why not generalize the notion of labels? Uh, that is a fair point. I want I had prefixed it with source because I was explicitly suggesting that these are the labels that are the developer has added to the source. Um, I think that this is a very interesting use case, and I'd want to see more about it before I really wait in. Yeah, but it sounds to me like we're confusing the term source once again because the 
if you t take the example I, I uh, published with the S3 topic that comes from SNS, that comes from S3, etc. You know, the source is not in the in this event. The source is not really the object that was generated in the S3 bucket. Is either the SNS service or the S3 service that reports about something? Well, then I think that's a different kind of label that isn't a source label, and it's valuable to the consumer to know, like in you know, in the actual PR, um, uh, it says um, labels associated with the resource that emitted the event, right? Allowing filtering or routing based on non-hierarchical source metadata. Like I think that's pretty clear that it is exclusive of something um, that is like, oh, I'm going to add something that says this was transmitted over SNS, which doesn't preclude having a, as we discussed in, in last call, doesn't preclude having some middleware that acts as the source and says, no, actually, I know that this IoT device was in a particular location, so I'm going to annotate it because I, I'm making my IoT device more efficient, right? Um, those yeah, are kind of two it, different concerns. It sounds to me like putting the attachment name in the email as source versus the, you know, from in the email as source. And the second, again, around the labels, if there is a need for that, uh, I would argue that labels needs to be generic, not specific to source, because as an intermediate uh, point, I may want to inject label because I've inspected the message and I've noticed something and I may want to label it. So I would uh, gener generalize labels, not necessarily as source label, and the source could be the thing that generates the first labels and others may inspect it or add additional labels. I personally think this would be a lot less uh, confusing if we had a single attribute that was the URI, because all that's basically happening here is breaking URI components and the labels actually correspond to the query of a URI where optional non-hierarchical values can go. I think just a quick point of order kind of thing. Uh, if you're not talking, can you please go on mute? Someone, someone was typing there and it's kind of overriding what Mark was saying. Mark, maybe you could just repeat the last part again. It's kind of hard to hear. I was just saying, like, it's very explicit in this doc that the source authority and source path relate to the URI um, uh, RFC and the corresponding section of the URI that would match labels is actually the query string, which I agree query would be a terrible, confusing name if, if broken out like this. But if we just had the URI as a single value and the optional query string is where you add key values for labels, it seems like that would be clearer that it's directly related to the URI representation of the source and not something that we picked up on the, on the path. Yes, yeah, so, so to me, um, I, I tend to agree with what I think you're saying there, Mark, and that's one of the reasons that I propose the idea of a single URI is because <clears throat> ultimately the source, and I guess the, the consumer, because they're going to have to understand it, you know, they're going to decide what data to include and stuff. And, and if you, the minute you start splitting these things out, you then have to get agreement on how many different ways you split it, what does each thing actually mean, and each source may actually have their own way of interpreting those things or their own set of data they want to pull out. Whereas if you just say it's a URI and the receiver, because they know they're talking to me, is going to be forced to extract the things that I tell them to extract in the right way to extract it, then we as a spec author don't have to get into that business of doing that for them or trying to find a, a normative way to define how to split it. You sort of let the URI producer define it themselves. Uh, the only thing I've heard that would be worthy of making things get pulled out is if for some reason the, the process of extracting the information becomes a burden from a performance perspective. Um, that was one of the arguments that I heard that really made me think, okay, there may be some things we need to pull out because it's common enough and, and it impacts performance enough that asking everybody to pull it out is just too, gonna slow things down too much. That was what I've heard and that's sort of where my head is at in all this. I think um, some of the other cases that as the vendors for a system that will handle these events, the stricter we can define the, the meaning of these properties, um, the better software we can build on it. So whether source authority and path are joined as one source or not, I would like to at least specify that the URI must include an authority component. 
Um, this is fairly important for knowing how to actually uh, set up the triggers that will fire these events, which I know is not currently, like triggering is not currently part of the spec, um, but I do want to make sure that the, you know, I'm kind of indirectly trying to solve that problem with this. Um, as far as the labels, uh, I put a comment in GitHub uh, asking for votes plus uh, up or down whether or not it should be source prefixed or not. Um, I am a little hesitant in putting it in the URI because I think it is valid that, um, you know, for example, if I have a simple event that tracked when someone clicked post on a URI and that URI had already a query fragment, but the resource backed by that URI had labels that are you know, internal and operational. Um, these are very different types of concepts and they have very different uh, integrity levels as well. One is user input and one is developer input. So I do think that these actually add a lot of value being separate. Um, I didn't quite follow that. I'm sorry. <laughs> can, so can you describe that a little more. So, um, so we've got seven minutes left. I wonder whether um, if we say that if source labels were in a separate PR, we could have a separate discussion around whether they should be source labels or just labels. And then I'm curious whether people on the call like this breakup of source authority and, and source path, which I think is, is a clarifying concept, but um, Thomas has indicated a willingness to go one way or the other. So I think that it might be good to hear people's opinions on that. Maybe we could close off that part of yeah. the PR. I think you could still refer to the RFC and the fact that authority is a required attribute. This must conform to the URI. I, I apologize. I was actually talking on mute earlier. <laughs> uh, so Thomas, I was going to ask you, what, how do you want to proceed on this? Is this something that you'd like to work through just comments in the PR itself, do you want to try to set up an offline meet and have a discussion or wait till next week's phone call, which I'd rather not do. But if, yeah. if I would like to make more progress than wait till next week. Um, right. So it seems like from what I'm gathering, there's a couple discussions. Uh, one is whether or not a uh, source should be split into authority and path. Okay. The other is um, about labels. Uh, the three options is they are part of the source directly. Um, the uh, second is what, that their attributes, their namespace to source, and the third is that they're just global. Uh, the only one I'm against is the first, um, for reasons I can go into in another PR. And then we haven't had a discussion on event type. All right. So, how so like, what I would ask the committee call? members is that um, for a, like I will put a couple of please vote yay or nay um, on uh, comments. If you do a thumbs up or thumbs down in GitHub. I will do follow-up PRs this week, the next day or two, um, that will split this into three PRs according to what has the best vote. Okay. Do you do you want it to be voting in GitHub? Would it be helpful if we had a like a a separate meeting a different day to just come to? Why, why, why do you need a meeting for the URI? I think there is a very clear question: Do we want the URI or do we want to break it down? I think the, I sense a consensus around trying to get to a URI. I think we can vote and then see what's the, we don't need a session because I think the question is clear. It's, it's your choice, Thomas, since it's your PR. However you want to work at it. I'm hearing you want to do a vote. Is that true? I, I think uh, I'll give yeah, people fine. one day to vote um, and then do separate PRs. Okay. Yeah, so people can, and I also would like to ask people when they vote to say why, because um, I think that helps other people um, align. Sounds good. Hey, hey, Doug, we've only got a few minutes left. I'm wondering if we could just take a couple minutes to just calibrate on a, on a possible schedule. Because uh, our next meeting is going to be in the month of April, and we have Cloud Native Con happening at the beginning of May. Um, and we'd love to announce this. It would be so great to announce this there. Uh, and we have to make sure that we're moving as fast as possible to get, you know, get the specification, the MVP of it finished, and then getting some examples and reference uh, architectures built around it. Yeah, and it would be great to use this meeting to focus on the required fields that are necessary for that. Yep. So, 
So Austin, um, how would you recommend best way to sort of, I guess, define what MVP is for the KubeCon event? Um, should we, because we already have the milestone stuff, but I suspect that's not fine-grained enough for that definition. No, it is Would we, maybe a I wiki set up for people to define it? what their requirements are for MVP? I thought that was the point one specification, or you mean specifically what do they think the required fields are necessary for the point one? I yeah, I mean, I, doing. yes, exactly. Or one way to do it is to say, open up issues or pull requests for whatever you think is for MVP, and then we can just tag those in GitHub with the milestone point one, and that's the way to track it. Yes, I thought that's what we were doing here. That, I mean, that's why I requested these holistic PRs, right? So what um, if we do if this? We, if, go ahead. Oh, see, right. So what if I send out a note to the mailing list to tell, to tell people that um, on next week's call, we're going to try to narrow down what the MVP items are. <clears throat> and so get your issues into GitHub or PRs into GitHub, one of the two. <clears throat> and we'll figure out which things get the V1, I'm sorry, V0.1 label. Perfect. Great. I think we should yeah. vote on that and make that finalize that uh, by the end of the next meeting. And um, yes. are we just not going to talk about process and governments like that, that, that just, do you want to have a separate talk about that? I just, I really feel like we could have some structure around the async conversations that could move us forward quickly. So Sarah, why don't you and I first talk offline? That'd be great. Okay. Um, and I guess, I guess in the notes, um, I will ask for people to explicitly make a comment somewhere in their PR or issue that they would like it be to be part of the MVP, um, just so we can get our list of things we're going to discuss and vote on next week. Because if it's not, if people don't say they want a part of the MVP, I think the default has to be that they don't think it's important enough for MVP. Sound fair? All right, cool. And with that, we're almost out of time, so let me just do a quick roll call. Uh, Garish, are you there? Yeah, hey, I'm here. Yeah, okay. hey, and I'm da sorry. David Lyle? Yes, I'm here. Okay, is there anybody, <clears throat> excuse me, is there anybody on the call who's not on the, uh, the attendee list? All right, cool. With that, I think we're done. Thank you guys very much. Talk next week. All right, thanks everyone. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you, bye.